Yeah, they're really cool rocks, all right. They're loaded with gold. That makes them really cool. This is a really beautiful breccia texture. You can see the red and the whites and all the colors to it. This is the stuff here at the bottom of the hole that ran 19 and a half grams per ton. That's over half an ounce per ton. Now, that's highly unusual to hit high grade like that out in the middle of nowhere in a blind hole. So this was the first discovery we made in Atlanta. That's what the excitement's all about here, is that you've got something that you very seldom run across. Strongly altered, juicy looking rock with an awful lot of gold in it. Very seldom do you run across something like this where you have this much high grade distributed over such a large area. That just doesn't happen. And this was a significant one because this is well north of the pit, well outside of the Gustafson resource zone. This was not part of that resource zone. So that right there tells us there's a lot more hiding out there than anyone knows about. Before, it, it was pretty much myself and one or two others. Now that's all changed because success has a way of changing things. The company has grown to the point now where we have to bring in uh, outside specialists to help us in terms of better understanding what all of this rock means, what all these core boxes in here mean. Currently, we have relogging going on of all the Atlanta core. We have a metallurgical program, which has been initiated, and we're in the stages now of where to go next with it in terms of uh, bottle roll column testing. Our last round of drilling down in the pit, boy, we hit six zingers right in a row. And, uh, and we had no inkling of that from the previous data. 135 feet averages seven grams. So at that point, our focus changed. Now that we looked at our own high-grade results, we could see now that there was some good potential here to extend that high-grade into areas where deeper drill holes that were put down 20, 30 years ago had hit some high-grade zones to try to make a resource out of it. If we can now go down dip to the north, to the south, along this high-grade Atlanta system and put some more high-grade into this resource. We can do that now. Now we're talking something that could well exceed a million ounces. Now where can we go look for a new deposit? Potentially something that could be much larger than what we already have. That brings us to the program for 2022. It looks like we've we can expand on the resource. We brought some experts who've worked in the area. So I, I think that you'll see some sea level changes in the work that we're doing this year and next. Uh, we're going back through the old core from Atlanta, trying to put together a much better picture of the geology of the deposit. And I need an accurate picture because I'm starting a much more ambitious program this year and I have to have a better idea of what I'm looking for. We've got core from many different decades now, and it's been logged by different people. And what's important to some is not important to others. And it's also, it's inconsistent. One of the reasons to look at it is get a consistent view of what's going on. By doing a re-logging, we, we build a model of what we think the deposit is. And then your drill holes are to either approve that model up or you modify your model. My experience, it's, it's been helpful and, and resulted actually in, in discovery of gold deposits. You know, because you can relog something, come up with a new interpretation, new geologic controls, and that can lead you to a new deposit and discovery. Look, big difference, right? This and this in the previous log are logged the same. Right, that's just the same rock uh, as all this other rock that we're looking at on the table. We're just logged the same as this. And obviously, they're not. Right? They're not the same. This is expensive information. 
right? This is an old core hole. To drill this same hole today might cost us a quarter million dollars. This is, so this is information that's sitting here. So why relog it? It's, this is $200,000 worth of information sitting in front of us. Why not relog it, right? Why not get as much information out of it as you can? Fantastic high-grade breccia from ARC1, running about 10 grams. This kind of a thick 10 gram intercept on the property shows the exploration the potential out there. The target we had before was a, a pit constrained 1 million ounce target. We now see there's potential here for something that could be much bigger. All this dovetails together. All, all the work you see, all the, the logging, the chip trays, all of that information will be integrated into one model and how we can take that model into the rest of the Atlanta district which is quite large and uh, our land position covered almost all of it and find more and that's really what excites everyone here is the possibility of making a new discovery elsewhere in the district that could exceed what we already have. Round Mountain, Nevada that's a possibility in Atlanta. The Cripple Creek Caldera-related system in Colorado. The Gold Strike deposit just across the border in Utah, large resource there. That also is quite a good possibility in Atlanta, given a similarity of geology, similarity of age. We've got a number of different targets, large targets here that we can now be looking for elsewhere in the Atlanta district, not just at Atlanta mine itself, where historically all of the attention was given just to that one area and everyone just blew off the rest of the district. It was of no value. Well, we think that's quite wrong. We're now seeing in this core the kind of, of progression of rock types and alteration, which make us believe we could have an Atlanta-type system virtually anywhere within the district now to Atlanta. And it could be much larger.